Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. This is video number four in our The Prophet's Handbook series, okay? This is kind of the third teaching. We have four, four videos so far because one was a introduction, okay? But don't miss that. It's full of good stuff, okay? Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment below. All those things help send this channel into the algorithm. All right, so in past videos in this series, we were talking about the gift, right? The prophetic gift, what it means to be called, what it means to be chosen, what it means to be ordained, um, who can have this gift. Um, we talked about the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet. We spent a lot of time there in the past two videos talking about what it means to be a true prophet of God, what it means to be a false prophet of God, which is basically a wolf in sheep's clothing, which is far different from a sheep that hasn't been matured properly, okay? A wolf and a sheep are two different things. And I hope to get more into that as we go and you'll see an example of what a true prophet is more and what a false prophet looks like, okay? But for right now, this is what the Lord wanted me to kind of talk about. And I love the flow of it. I love how it kind of um, trails off of what we just talked about. Because like I said, we're talking about in link. Well, a true prophet does this and a true prophet does that and a true prophet does this. And so it's nice to kind of bring it down a notch back to humility zone. And let's say what a true prophet is not okay a true prophet is not always right-hearted guys okay um and we are going to that is going to be the zone we're going to be in in this video um but also a true prophet is not perfect and a true prophet is not someone who knows everything okay a, a true prophet is a human being okay and there is not a perfect human being out there the Bible says that all fall short of God's glory. All of us have sinned, all fall short of God's glory. And we're going to talk about two prophets that fall sh have fallen short of God's glory, all right? A prophet can't always be right-hearted, okay? We should, absolutely, um, but we fall short, okay? Let's look at uh, Jonah, for example. I think Jonah is probably the best example here. We have two situations just in the one story of Jonah, the very short book of Jonah, um, but Jonah was a prophet, and uh, not only was he like, uh, no, when <laughs> God told him where to go, but he ran in the opposite di direction. So not only did he, you know, sometimes God will call someone, tell someone to do something, ask someone to do something kind of thing, and they just want to be lazy or complacent. Jonah was rebellious. <laughs> Jonah completely went in the opposite direction of where God had told him to go, right? In the long run... Jonah was operating off of feelings rather than obedience to God, okay? He obviously was not sharing the same heart about the situation as God had because if he was, he would have been obedient and did what God had called him and told him to do, okay? But he was operating off of feelings. That is not the heart of God. Jonah's feelings were were not what God's heart was in this situation, okay? So he is a prophet, and he is not maintaining the heart of God in this situation, okay? So not only does he not go, right? And we see him be disobedient. We see God correct him. He was rebellious, okay? So not only does he not go and runs at first, but then... He, tell, he finally goes, right? He finally, God sends him after he gets out of the belly of the whale. He has a talk with him and he's like, fine. He goes and he tells the people, God is going to destroy you. And I think it was like 40 days or something. And they repent. They repent with, you know, fasting and ashes and sackcloth and that kind of thing, right? They repent and the Lord has mercy on them, okay? He has mercy. And then he has to, the Lord has to correct Jonah again about his attitude about their repentance, okay? And, I, and I've heard, uh, I've heard suggestions um, that Jonah didn't think that they deserved grace, right? And that's why he didn't want to go. But from a prophetic person's view, and if you read the New Living Translation, I love the New Living Translation. I think it really highlights what the core problem is here. And I think that 
the core issue was that Jonah didn't want to be a false prophet. I think that's why he ran in the first place. Okay. In those days, if you were a prophet and you said, you know, something you said didn't come to pass, you were likely going to be put to death. Okay. There's scriptures in Deuteronomy that talk about this because you were clearly, if it didn't come to pass, clearly you were speaking from another God, you know, little G, or God didn't send you in the first place. And that was means of death. Okay. Um, the call, guys, the call to be a prophet is a heavy call. Um, if we don't recognize how heavy it is, we have no business entering in the first place. Okay. But also don't run. <laughs> okay. Don't run. Or you're going to end up in the belly of a whale or something worse. Right. Um, but getting back to maintaining the heart of God, um, Jonah was a prophet and he did not have the right heart twice in the same situation, guys. Okay. So let's look at another prophet real quick um, who needed correction on where his heart was. Um, Jeremiah, they call him the weeping prophet. Okay. Here's the scripture where um, Jeremiah, he says, why is my pain perpetual? And my wounds won't heal. And then he says this to God. He says, you are to me like an unreliable stream. Okay, so do you think that Jeremiah has the heart of God right now? Do you think that he is maintaining the heart of God or that he is operating out of feelings? Okay, so clearly he's human being. He is operating out of feelings and he needs corrected. And God basically says to him something like, look, I will heal you when you stop talking nonsense. Okay, so go go back and read that when you have the chance. Okay, so he's calling God unreliable. Okay, um, from the mouth of, of a holy prophet. Okay, so my point is this, guys, a prophet must wake up every single day, hourly, I mean, well, they must wake up every day, but making a commitment that hourly and minutely, guys, secondly, that they are intentional about obtaining and maintaining the heart of God, okay? Speci in, in every area, okay? All Christians should do this, okay? But specifically prophets and specifically in the areas that God is speaking to them about, okay? Because he will show them hard things. He will show them sins of people, okay? And he isn't always showing us sins of people and what these people are doing so that we will condemn them but that we will reach out to them, that we will intercede for them, okay? And not make judgments based on our own biasness, that kind of thing, okay? So we as prophets have to be intentional. It isn't something that, oh, you know what? God ordained me to be a prophet. Now I'm perfect. Now I'm constantly maintaining the heart of God. I know exactly what he wants in every situation, guys. I've used this illustration before in uh, another video recently. I don't know if it was the prophet's handbook. I think it was. And I, I use the illustration of, of this, the parable that Jesus told about the kingdom of God. And he's saying, you know, the kingdom of God is like, you know, a man, a landowner who went out and he sowed, uh, sowed wheat basically. And then while men slept, an enemy came and he sowed the tares, right? And so at the end, the workers come and they say to him, they say to the landowner, basically, do you want us to uproot the weeds, you know, the tares. And he's, and cause they're, they're full of righteous anger, guys. They're full of this injustice that has taken place in this, this landowner that they respect and revere and honor. And so they're like, I'll, I'll just uproot those. I will just, I'll finish this right now. I'll take care of it. The power to do so. Okay. And, and yet that wasn't the heart of God that wasn't the wisdom of God and said instead the landowner which is the Lord says no let them grow together and the time of harvest then we will separate them out we don't want to disrupt the growth of the wheat okay so God's wisdom is far beyond ours okay and we are to just assume because we have this awesome calling and awesome anointing over our life and this awesome chosenness to our life whatever you want to call it okay that we're a chosen vessel and somehow we're god's gift to humankind in every single aspect instead of assuming that to intentionally may obtain excuse me excuse me to intentionally obtain 
and maintain the heart of God in every practice, everything we do, but especially the things that we are hearing and seeing, being shown in dreams, that kind of thing, guys. Okay, because we will be asked to go to places, go to people that we may not like, okay? Uh, people that we don't think deserve grace or even our own grace, okay? Just the other day, this happened to me. This has happened many times in my journey, and I know this was part of my training and part of what the Lord was asking me to do, okay? And we are to be obedient. We're to put all those things aside, to be obedient to Him, okay? Um, there, there's someone who I feel like has done me wrong, and they don't seem to see that they've done me wrong, even though I've told them many times. They don't want to apologize for it. And I've, and, and we've gone rounds and rounds and rounds. And yet sometimes the Lord is like, I want you to go to that person and I want you to give them this word for me. Okay. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I really don't want to. Honestly, I'd prefer just move on with my life and not really talk to this person until they're ready to have a friendship and a relationship again. Um, but nevertheless, it's not my will, but yours be done. And I will not put my feelings in the way of being obedient to God so that he can see a soul saved, so that he can see a soul repent, so that he can see a relationship restored, so that he can do whatever that it is that he sees fit to do. Okay, so we have to put aside our feelings, our emotions, and be obedient. Okay, obtaining and maintaining the heart of God in our prophetic journey, okay? You'll be asked to go to people who intimidate you, okay? Especially when we are leading with a word of correction, okay? Not a fun thing, but God will ask us to do it, okay? And so, and guys, here's another reason we have to obtain and maintain the heart of God, and that is just as clear as day. This goes for all Christians, but especially for prophets, guys, especially for prophets, Everybody is watching. Everybody is watching your life. You are a glass house, like it or not, okay? Remember I told you that the, the weight of the calling of the prophetic is heavy. This is part of it because your life is on constant display. There are people that are like literally watching you just so they can go, ah, there it is right there. She's imperfect. He's imperfect. And you're like, yes, I know. Trust me. I look in the mirror every single day. I know that I'm imperfect, you know, but it's also that they can, they don't have to believe in prophecy. Okay. Or so that the devil can make it put to shame in front of God's people. Okay. That kind of thing. All right. But, um, we are always supposed to be careful of how we live, making sure that we're maintaining, uh, obtaining first, and then maintaining the heart of God in all we do, okay? We can't be perfect. We can't be perfect, but we can be our best, okay? And we can do that through being intentional. So my point to this is that you don't just wake up a prophet one day and suddenly have completely obtained and are maintaining God's heart, okay? It takes intentionality. It takes being intentional every day, every moment with every information he's given you. Lord, why are you showing me this? What is your heart? What is your will here? Okay, sometimes, like I said, it just seems so easy to stand up with righteous anger and be like, that needs shut down. And God's like, I'm actually producing fruit. Instead of shutting it down, how about praying and interceding, coming in agreement with me that these people's hearts and minds will be changed, okay? Things like that. All right, laying aside our feelings for obedience, laying aside what we think is right, you know, <laughs> with the righteous anger again, whatever we think is right, because that's how we were cultivated to think was right. That's what our, our Bible college said, but rather laying those aside, testing it against what are you saying, God? What are you saying here? Okay. And, and, and for others watching, Okay, I said in the beginning of this series, you know, this is going to edify you. This is going to help you even if you aren't called into the prophetic. Okay, so for those watching that aren't called into the prophetic, this helps you also to understand that prophets are not perfect. Okay, because it's easy to fall into the trap 
just like a prophet can fall into the trap of believing that they're God's gift to humankind and everyone should follow every single thing that they think and believe, their political views, their, you know, X, Y, Z, the colors that they use in their front room, <laughs> okay? Um, and that's not the case, and I hope that I've proven that. But on the other hand, it's easy as an onlooker to be like, wow, the Lord speaks to them. Well, surely they must be right about what colors and design to use in their front room. <laughs> okay, even to the T of that. Okay, um, not just the, the major things in life, but also following like the smaller things. Okay, and it's just simply not true. Okay, um, we don't want to fall into the trap of believing the prophet is always right in everything that they do and everything that they believe. As a prophetic person, I personally try to do this. When I am doing a video, when I'm talking to someone, um, when I'm praying with someone and the Lord gives me a word, I try to make a clear line and a clear distinction between I feel like and the Lord said, okay? And when we use the words the Lord said, we need to be completely accurate about what the Lord said. We can be humans. We can have our own feelings. We can say, you know, I feel like maybe this and this and this, or I hope it's this and this and this, but to make a clear line and a clear distinction that hey, the Lord has not confirmed this to me, but here's how I see this passage of scripture, okay? That kind of thing, all right? We make mistakes. We make mistakes, but hopefully, guys, hopefully this raises up a generation of prophets better than the, than the previous one. And that's not to just slam them, but we should be getting better, literally. We should be getting better and better and better as time goes on and not worse, okay? So hopefully this helps raise up a generation of, of prophets better than the last um, who can, who can, who intentionally seek to obtain and maintain the heart of God. All right, so that's what I have for you this week and in this teaching specifically. So God bless you guys, and I look forward to seeing you in other videos.